When I shut up heaven and there is no rain, or command the locusts to devour the land or send pestilence among my people. I want you to pay attention to verse 14. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and heal their land. America is in trouble today, guys. We're standing on the brink of disaster, whether you believe that or not. Not since the 50s and the Cuban Missile Crisis has the threat of nuclear war been more prominent in our land than it is right now. North Korea already has the nuclear bomb, and they're daring anybody to come take it away from us. Iran, if they don't have it, they've almost got a nuclear weapon. China, and we thought Russia had laid down and died. Russia has risen from the smoke, guys. He's there. The threat of nuclear war in America is ever-present. We're living in a time in America when all of our resources have went out in Afghanistan and Iraq. We can't even hardly fund the army anymore. America is in trouble. And it seems that so many years ago, 9-11 happened, and America's confidence has been shaken. Everywhere you go, airport security, everywhere you go, we're worrying about a terrorist attack. America, land of the free, home of the brave. No longer brave and we owe everything to China. Economic collapse has caused America to sink down into the pit where it was once the most prosperous nation in the world. Now we ain't even second class citizens. Everywhere we look, there's natural disasters. Wildfires in California. Earthquakes out west. Tornadoes up through the valley of the Mid-East. Tornado Valley. Valley, or whatever they call that. Hurricanes. Pestilences, diseases. Everywhere. There's the threat of uprising and rebellion. We're facing a time in America unless something happens. For the have-nots are going to get tired of being the have-nots and they're going to take from the haves. It's coming. Moral decay has shook America to the fiber. We used to be land of the free, home of the brave and the mighty eagle soared over the skies of America. But moral decay has racked and destroyed this country. We're in a cesspool in America. A cesspool. Y'all know what a cesspool is? A septic tank is something full of filth and sin and we're up to her mouth in it and we're sticking, sticking her tongue out and tasting it. Well, it don't taste that bad. Where have we fallen to? We're looking for somebody to save us, somebody to redeem us. We're looking in the wrong places, David. We're looking to the elephant. The Republican Party, the conservative party, to deliver us. Ain't what happened. And when they're in office, that claim's forgotten. 
we just slide through like, oh, I made that promise. Then on the other side, I'm going to help the little man. The little man's still hungry. The little man's still hurting. The little man still don't have anything. In our state, I'm telling you, these guys will tell any kind of lie to get elected. In this state of Tennessee, there was a man out either in Asheville or Memphis, I don't remember. He's a politician. And he stood on the policy of anti-abortion. And that's a good thing. Don't get me wrong. That's a good thing. But it's more than don't do as I say, but or do as I do type thing. They just found out, man. His mistress, not his wife, but his mistress had had an abortion. And then we're standing on a policy of no abortion. No, we're trying to get elected into office. Congress is full of people that don't believe in homosexuality, but you got the other bunch there having homosexual relations with their pages there. We're living in a time where politicians don't do anything but lie. That's all they do. But if we will look, there is a Redeemer. There is somebody that can deliver America. There is somebody that can pull us out of this pit we're in, out of this cesspool, out of this septic tank, and put us up on the solid rock. And that's the very simple lamb that became the lion of the tribe of Judah. Jesus, my Savior. He's the only one that's going to deliver us. It ain't the Republican Party. It ain't the Democrat Party or any party in between. It's my Savior, my Redeemer. He's the only one that can redeem you. Verse 14 again. If my people... My people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face. Need to catch this. And tear from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and heal their land. That's not the elephant speaking. That sure ain't the donkey brain. That's the Word of God. Amen. If you want America's land to be healed, we're going to have to turn to somebody who can do something about it. That's right. Okay, guys. Now, we've got some problems. And I don't want to go here this morning, but God has put this on me this morning. We've got some problems. The church... Church people, you can't tell them from the lost anymore, brother. You can't tell them. They're the same. Sitting in the pews every Sunday, sitting in the chairs every Sunday are people that claim to be church people. And I use that term very loosely this morning. That they're as lost as lost can be. You'll find them on Friday and Saturday night down at the bars before they come to the church on Sunday. Church people. Church people. I had one come up to me. He goes to church three days a week. He talked about going on a trip and getting a lap, a lap dance at a bar. My God, my God, where are we going? Don't we understand that the Bible says we're supposed to be a separate people. We're not reading from the same book, guys. There's something wrong with this picture. When we had our church in Greenville, our mall sign, we had some people who'd come, they'd come every Sunday. What their lifelong ambition was, and Travis knows what I'm talking about. Their lifelong ambition was to get drunk on Saturday night, sing karaoke down at the hideaway. My God, get a life. That's not what God called you to be. He didn't call you to water and fill the 
and pray. He called you to be a separate people. Amen. Somebody that's separated from the filth of the world. Yes. Where are we living today? We partake of the same sin. You can't go home today. I don't care where you live. If you pass a billboard, it's going to probably cause you to lust. You got nice looking guys tempting women to lust. You got nice looking girls tempting men to lust. And what's really sick, you got nice looking guys tempting guys to lust. We're living in a land full of homosexuality, a, a land that Sinking down into sin deeper and deeper and deeper. Back in the Old Testament, the city of Sodom and Gomorrah, the cities, were destroyed because of homosexual sin. Do you think that God changed? God's still the same. If He hated it then, He hates it now. Amen. During the time of the kings of Israel, outside the city walls, a little valley there, the valley of Gehana, I believe it's called, they set up a false idol, Moloch, caused their children to be sacrificed to a false god in the fire to appease Moloch. And we think, boy, that's so barbarous. We would never do anything like that. But don't we? Ain't there a voice of a million unborn children screaming? They've been sacrificed to the God called sexual pleasure. My God, where are we at today? Where are we living? And you know what's sad? People who get their abortions are just as many in church as they are outside the church. Adultery, everywhere you look. Stealing, lying. We justify everything we do. We ain't reading from the same book. And the things that I'm telling you are true today. I had a, a church person come up to me and he was to talk. Now, this is a dedicated church person. He goes Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. He was thanking God. I said, okay, what's going on with you, man? He said, I'm just thanking God. I said, okay. He said, I'm going through a midlife crisis. I said, okay. He said, God got kids through college. I said, follow me your Corvette. There ain't nothing wrong with Corvette. Don't get me wrong. I didn't want to say it. He said, I'm going to get my wife the house. He said, the Lord's giving me this hot little thing. I'm going to spend the rest of my life with her. I deserve it. My God, ain't they reading from the same book? I I'm missing something. I don't find that in from Gen Genesis to Revelation. It's not there. We it's not there. To the same trash. Same trash. Most of Americans fell in love with country music. And I don't mean to blast anything. I'm just telling you what God's given me this week. We want to talk about the wooden crosses beside the road. We want to sing that song. Probably a beautiful song. I'm sure the intent was good. But the man that sung the song, they arrested him for public drunkenness and running naked downtown. The Bible says that a fountain won't spew forth both bitter and sweet water. You're either one or you're the other. Now what are you? I don't think that that was sweet water running down the street naked, do you? Huh? I don't think God said, I'm pleased with you, son. No, He wasn't pleased with that. And we turn this music on and we're like, well, it's just the background. Well, we can't go anywhere without music. Got it pounding in her head day and night. And I don't know who sings this song. I have no idea who sings it. But I got a hint of it at work the other day. It's a story about a girl that her husband ain't paying no attention to her. So 
So she goes out to the bar, said, I ain't ever done this kind of thing before. And there's a man standing there in the bar and said, you may be lonely when you come in here, but you ain't going to be lonely no more. <laughs> My God, where have we sucked to? Now you think about what I'm saying. That's a song out there. I may have changed it around a little bit, but there's a song out there like that. And we're sitting there dialing it. I ain't going to be lonely no more. And our kids are sitting there listening to us, bebopping around to that. What are they thinking? Where are we leading our children? We're leading them down to a path of destruction like the rest of America. Rock, rap, whatever it may be. If it ain't glorified God, I don't need to hear it. And that's plain. Y'all, you can do what you want to with it. I don't need to hear it. I don't listen to it. Because it's sending the wrong message. It's causing us to be polluted and going into that cesspool of sin. Oh, we look at the same fields too, don't we? How many of you have got internet? I guess we all got internet. We all watch internet. You'll be just scrolling along looking at the good things. Television. Oh boy, am I going to get in trouble for today's out. There's a new program coming out this fall. The new norm? Huh? The new norm? Yeah, I guess that's the name of the thing. I don't know. It's about two queers, and I said queers. I didn't say homosexual. I said queers. <laughs> I want to be plain. They are queer, odd, strange. <laughs> that are in a relationship, and they want to have a baby. So they hire this woman that I believe Reba, whoever she is, is going to star as the woman and have the baby for the two queers. They are in from the same book, I'm telling you. It's not normal. It ain't right. Now, television has done a lot of damage and we don't even understand it. I remember back when I was small, and this may be way before anybody saw it, except maybe David and my mom. There was a show on there called I Dream of Genie. Now, in I Dream of Genie, there was this bottle. It was a genie bottle. And this scantily clad lady comes out of the bottle, and she gives you whoever was there or whatever wishes they want. Seems innocent, didn't it? And then there was Samantha. She'd wiggle her nose, and we'd cast a spell. Seemed innocent. But look where it's led us. Wiccan. Witchcraft. Satanism. Every corner you turn, you see it. Where did it start? It started as a little nose wiggling. A little pop out of the bottle. But where are we at now? Where are we at now? Where has America fallen? You can't tell the church people from the rest of them. I think the bottom line is church people need to quit being church people. And we need to become Christians. We need to become Christ-like, Mary. We need to look at things the way He would look at them. The scripture, one more time. It says, yet my people, who's he talking to? We're called by my name. Who's he talking to? If my people, who are called by my name, will humble themselves, pray and seek my face. What's he asking you to do? Get out of the pride that you've got. Humble yourself, pray and seek his face. And turn from your wicked ways. And he said, and then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins. And I'll heal their land. The elephant can't do it. The donkey can't do it. One more thing. What we need is revival. We need revival. Now when I say revival, I'm not talking about a weekend group of meetings every night. That's not what I'm talking about. 
I'm not talking about when you pay Joel Osteen or John Henry or whoever to come in and hold a week long meeting. That ain't what I'm talking about. I'm talking about change in your life. Amen. Now see, it ain't been so long ago. I remember going to church. And when you go to church, people didn't gather around and gossip. They hit the altar. And they prayed. You know what they was praying for? Lord, let the anointing be upon the man of God that brings the word. Lord, save some lost soul. Save old John down there in the trailer park. Lord, heal that marriage that's fallen apart. We had something to pray for. As Christians, that's what we need to do. We need to pray. And I remember when you would come to church, you'd be hungry. Not for the Golden Corral. Not for McDonald's. But you'd be hungry for the Word of God. You couldn't wait to get into the house to hear the amazing story of Jesus Christ. Where are we falling from? We have fallen into spiritual stagnation. As long as you come in the door, <coughs> sit on the pew, hold your hands, hold them tight, don't show any emotion, be real still, be real quiet. He'll shut up in a minute, you'll get to go to the golden corral. We're stagnated. We're like a pond that's got scum over it. We need to be a, a moving water, a running water, a river of living water that's bringing forth, bringing life to the lost and the hurting, the doomed and the damned. We need this heart that's made out of rock, ripped out of our heart and a heart of flesh put in. That's what we need. Where I can care, brother, if you're having a problem, where I'm concerned, hey, you got enough money to pay the rent. Where are we at? When we get in revival, we will learn what worship means. When we stand in awe of a holy God, when we feel like what we need to do is lay on the floor with our face buried in the carpet, calling out to a holy God to forgive us. Amen. He's so good, ain't he? Revival brings us to that place where I care about Linda's friends that are lost. I care about my mom's neighbors at Story. Revival causes and calls for us to be committed to a holy God. God's holy. He calls us to be separated from the filth of this world. I'm not telling you you don't sin. We sin daily. We die daily. But when we choose to live a lifestyle of sin, we're spitting in Jesus' face. We are facing a choice today. Are we going to become Christians and be Christ-like? Are we going to keep on being church people? Staggering in the back door, half asleep, in a hurry to get out, wishing that I'd shut up. You can't go much longer. It's at 10, 15 after 12. <laughs> What are we going to do? We need a purpose in our heart to make that change. Change is before you this morning. I promise you, I didn't sit down and figure this sermon out, David. I spent time before my on my face before God said, God, I don't want to preach that. And I'm telling you the truth. 
But that's what he said we needed today. He said we needed to be alive. We'll make one more statement. Doc, I'm sure Brian to come up. You have to come up now. How many of you in this building believe that the Lord's coming back? Do you believe that? He's coming back for somebody. What I personally believe that He's coming back for His bride. Okay? Spotless bride. One that sins have been covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. He's not coming back and don't take this the wrong way. I talk about this in relationship with the church. He ain't coming back for the whore. He's not coming back for the slut. He's coming back for somebody that's got those sins that they committed under the blood of Jesus Christ. He's not coming back for the whore hopper, David. He's coming back for somebody that has purpose in their heart. They're going to live for God. That they purpose in their heart. They're getting that junk behind them. They've opened the door to their house and the door to their heart, David. And they kicked the trash out. That's what he's calling you to do today. Step up to play. You can hit a home run with Jesus. But you got to kick a trash can. That's what you got to do. You know, we sometimes look at our sins as if they're nothing. And we all say, <coughs> everybody in this room sins daily. But the Lord don't look at our sin lightly, actually. Do you know why He don't? Because He endured a beat. They reached up, grabbed His beard, and jerked it out. They reached up and grabbed handfuls of hair and jerked it out because of my sin. My callousness, my not caring ways, they took a whip and they beat him unmercifully till the bone and the organ showed out his back to where there's strips of flesh laying all around the ground. Because of my sins, the things I would do. They walked him up Calvary's hill, the load become heavy. He got to the top of the hill, he stretched out his hands. For me, for you. It cost him his life. So he don't take sin lightly. Maybe you're here this morning and uh, you don't know him as your personal Savior. I personally believe you've got to have that personal relationship with him. The Bible says that the devils know of him. And they know Him. They shake with fear and trembling. But you've got to have a relationship with the King of Glory if you're going to heaven. It's something very serious this morning. Do you have that relationship with Him? If you don't, I invite you to come this morning. Maybe one time you tasted the joys of God and all the good things that He's got for you. And maybe you've wandered away a little bit and maybe you're colder than a frog. The Lord can stir a fire inside of you. He can give you something inside that will strengthen you and encourage you. He can make you become alive and and not desire the filth of this world. Maybe you've got a friend that's man, just lost, heading for hell's place they can go. Maybe you'd like to come and pray for them.